welcome to the online edition. Um, obviously, it'd be wonderful if we could all be sharing a space in beautiful Malulaba at Sea Life, but um, it's nice to be online with everyone um, because we get to have people from all over the place. Uh, so welcome from wherever you are. Uh, tonight, like I said, we have the wonderful Tony Massey. I've just met her, but she's just a bundle of joy. I'm so happy that I have met this lady. She's just so awesome. And I think that um, you guys will really love hearing from her tonight. Um, just really wonderful, um, I guess, just charisma. And I can't wait to pick her brain and find out all that she knows about um, Queensland's heritage, world heritage shipwrecks. I think I got it right. Did I not? It's all right. We're no. going to be learning about diving on the wreck and um, what we can do to help, uh, which is really exciting. Um, so a quick acknowledgement of country. Um, I'm in Sunshine Coast, which means that it's um, Gubby Gubby or Cabby Cabby land. And we'd like to pay our respects to um, elders past, present and emerging. Um, and wherever you are in Australia or the world, um, honoring those indigenous people um, that were looking after that land for us. Um, so who is Reef Check? Um, that's us, <laughs> uh, the people putting this on um, and a bunch of other awesome stuff um, all over the world. Um, Reef Check Australia is a nonprofit organization um, that believes in protecting people and uh, reefs and oceans uh, by empowering citizens to be the best versions of themselves that they can, doing the right thing um, and helping them you know how they can uh, make a positive difference in um, the world and um, climate change, all that stuff um, in terms of ocean and reef health. So um, through hands-on research and education, they believe they can better understand, appreciate and protect the marine resources for the future. So it's all about education, just like events like tonight, bringing us all together, learning awesome things about, uh, about marine archeology span tonight. So just a bit of housekeeping. Um, obviously you probably know where the bathrooms are in your house uh, or wherever you are. So that's where those are. Um, keep your video muted and uh, your video uh, sound muted as well um, so that we can have full attention on the lovely Tony. Um, if you're not on the mailing list and you'd like to be, you can email um, seqevents at reefcheckaustralia.org to be added. Um, if you have questions as you go, you can use the chat box. Our good man Erlen is going to be monitoring that and we'll get to the questions at the end. Um, and we'll do a group photo before we kick off just for promo and stuff. So if you want to get yourself all nice, we'll do that while we're switching screens. Um, and a couple upcoming events that we wanted to share with you guys. So we have Prana Fest coming up. Um, this sounds like the most amazing event. I'm so excited. I'm definitely going to be going myself. Um, and we are the chosen um, nonprofit for the event. So um, we'll be helping with waste management, um, but also having donation buckets and stuff. So it'd be a good um, spot to come hang out with the Reef Check squad. Um, and obviously uh, check out some really cool uh, music and workshops as well. I see Double Ray and Oka on there, which means that it's uh, gonna be a good time. Um, Next, oh, Gold Coast Green Week. I thought this was the next talk, all the posters, there we go. Um, so um, that's on Wednesday the 9th, uh, that's a Zoom chat. Uh, and then DIY Bees Wax wraps via Zoom, which sounds awesome. So that's on Thursday the 10th of June, uh, also part of the Gold Coast Green Week. We have Beer Yoga which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, that's at Your Mates Brew House in Sunshine Coast. So that's, um, it's a really good time. <laughs> gets a bit wild, gets all the, all the good vibes flowing there. So come check it out if you're around. It's a fundraiser for us as well. Um, and we also have Horizon Festival. So that's um, more details to come there, but watch that space and save the dates. There's gonna be a lot of cool things happening there. Um, so next month's online event is on June 8th, and uh, we have Shark uh, Fish Sensory Systems with Olivia Seeger. So mark your calendars for that, and um, we'll get the Facebook event up and running for that one so you can register and have the link to join us there. 
So uh, if you want to get involved and volunteer, do what I'm doing tonight or any of the other awesome things that Reef Check is up to mm -hmm. as an ambassador or as um, a uh, survey diver, then um, you can do the trainings. There's ambassador trainings or um, you can uh, do the actual survey diver courses and they have things like fish ID and other ways that you can get involved in um, have citizen science and um, environmental science together. Um, please chuck us a follow and a like on all your major socials um, and you can sign up for our mailing list um, via email like we had on the previous slide. Um, huge shout out to our major sponsors for this event this uh, month and all all the months. <laughs> um, Sunshine Coast Council, Clean Water Group, um, the City of Gold Coast, uh, Mask Events, the Townsville Council, and Port of Brisbane. All right, and uh, also shout out to the volunteers. Uh, I'm not in that picture. I don't think Ireland's in that picture. <laughs> we need to, yeah, we need a new picture. <laughs> Needs a new update. <laughs> but um, these are awesome humans uh, who are helping guide the way for um, some new volunteers to come and help make some stuff happen. So shout out to them. And it brings us to tonight's speaker. Uh, we have Tony Massey. So she's a PhD candidate from Flinders University and a part-time maritime archeologist for the Department of Environment and Science. Tony is currently responsible for the management and protection of all of Queensland historic shipwrecks. Tony completed a Bachelor of Archaeology, Maritime Archaeology Honors, and has over 15 years experience in managing historic shipwrecks in Australia. Tony is a Reef Check Ambassador and has been a long-standing member of Australia, Australasian Institute of Maritime Archaeology and is actively involved with AMA Council. So she'll tell you more about all the details um, on our local historic shipwrecks, which is very cool. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And while we all are here, I'll put it on grid view, gallery view, I mean. So you can turn off your, or turn on your cameras now if you wanna be in the picture. You can change your name if you wanna stay anonymous. Um, and if you wanna be in the picture, join in. We're gonna do two, because we have two screens of people, because there's that many. So exciting. All right. Five more seconds. If you want to turn on your camera, you can. All right. Smile. Beautiful. We'll do one on the second page. Anybody else want to turn on their camera? No. All right. Ready? Smile. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, and I will hand it over to you, Tony. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the welcome. Um, good evening, everybody. Let me just share my screen, which is probably going to be the hardest thing throughout the night for me. Okay. Let me see. Okay. In the beginning. In the beginning. Rachel. Oh, sorry, it's a bit, bit chunky, a bit slow. Um, so can everyone see that? Thumbs up? Yes. Yay. Yes. Okay, yeah. Fantastic. yeah, it's good. Um, super, super appreciate everyone rocking up tonight. Um, it's my pleasure to basically talk to you about um, historic shipwrecks um, and underwater cultural heritage in Queensland. Um, I am specifically only going to be focusing on Queensland because that's my area of expertise. As Lindsay, the lovely Lindsay um, explained, I um, protect and manage all of Queensland's historic underwater cultural heritage. So when I say something is a historic or a shipwreck is historic, I mean that it's been underwater for 75 years or longer. So. This is a little bit um, about what I'm going to be discussing tonight. So if you want to pop off and grab a drink, you can um, focus on your favorite bits. Um, so we're just going to be looking at, you know, maritime archaeology and what it is that we actually do. A little bit about the legislation. I promise it's going to be very, very small. I won't bang on too much about that. Um, why are wrecks important and what can wrecks tell us? Uh, the secret life of shipwrecks. So a little bit about site formation processes. 
um, and um, that historic shipwrecks are grave sites, natural disturbances, um, shipwrecks as bio, um, biodiversity hotspots, local shipwrecks, so where you can go and dive on these amazing um, wrecks, um, and basically how you can help, which um, we, we do need help. So stick around for the, for the last bit, if you, if you don't mind. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, let's jump in. Literally, we'll dive in. So basically, what is maritime archaeology? It is a real job. Uh, a lot of my friends think that um, it's not a real job and I just go diving every day on shipwrecks. That's not actually true. What we do, we actually study material culture and artifacts and anything that um, interacts with the sea, the ocean, rivers and the lakes. Um, contrary to what my family thinks, it is not about dinosaurs and it's not about Lara Croft or Indiana Jones. Um, yeah, so I'll just keep going. So what do we do? Uh, we identify, map, monitor, and report on underwater cultural heritage sites. So it's not just shipwrecks that we, we look after or we manage. It is also um, uh, jetties, submerged sites, anything that's underwater, basically, um, that's 75 years or older. Also aircraft wrecks, so I need to um, focus on, um, so I need to, let you know about we do protect aircraft wrecks as well. I am going to be specifically just talking about uh, shipwrecks tonight because otherwise I will be here um, all night to, to talk about what we do. We basically, as a maritime archaeologist, we locate and we survey underwater cultural heritage sites. So to locate a site, we use something called a magnetometer, and that's what this picture is here. A magnetometer picks up ferrous material, so it picks up things like uh, chains, anchors, winches, how to also pick up an iron shipwreck, which would be, which is great. We call it mowing the lawn. So we basically do these transects um, and we um, just steer the boat. So the magnetometer gets towed behind a boat and you just steer the boat in a straight line. Uh, and then you turn around and you basically do that for a really long time. And then you pick up these pings or anomalies uh, and then we basically dive on those anomalies and, and hopefully with fingers crossed, we, we, we pick up a, a historic shipwreck. Um, often I have not picked up any shipwrecks at all. We've just, I, 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 um, one site in the Whitsundays, I picked up a, um, a shopping trolley. So that wasn't that exciting in very bad visibility, might I ask. So um, it is a bit of a, um, a hit and miss. Uh, we also uh, do swim searches to search for sites. We use drones uh, as well, which is absolutely fantastic, especially on the Great Barrier Reef, because a lot of our sites are really, really shallow. Uh, so we also manage and protect sites. So we do that by doing conservation management plans, rec reports, and we also do significant, um, significant reports as well on particular shipwrecks and survey reports. We also update the Australasian Underwater Cultural Heritage Database, which is a Commonwealth database. Anyone can access this to look at shipwrecks throughout Australia. I'm gonna talk a bit about that at the end of this presentation. We also, some states have their own state database as well. So we update those um, when we find new sites or when we um, survey sites so that it's all current information. Can I say something? Oh, we also do permits. So I'll oh, get to that, jump in the gun. Ooh. I was going to ask, basically in Queensland, we have over 1400 historic shipwrecks. So you can't really see in this picture, but there are little green ships and there are little red ships. The green ships are the sites that we know of. The red ships are sites still to be found. So we actually have only found about a third of our historic shipwrecks and aircraft wrecks in Queensland. So we have a lot of work to do. Um, yeah, so a lot of work. A little bit about protection. All sites in Queensland that have been underwater for 75 years or longer, as I've already mentioned, are protected by law. And this is through the Queensland Heritage Act and the Underwater Cultural Heritage Act. We call it blanket protection. So at the date of their birthday for being underwater for 75 years, they are automatically protected. So it is an offense under these, this legislation to interfere and interact or, or take something from a, from a shipwreck, historic shipwreck or aircraft wreck. In Queensland, we have um, eight protected zones. Protected zones are for our really significant historic shipwrecks. 
Uh, we have probably the most, I think the most protected zones in any state. And that's because we have, I think, maybe I'm biased, uh, we have amazing shipwrecks in Queensland. I am biased, but we actually do. Um, so protected zones are there to protect these really fragile and significant sites. Anyone can dive any of these shipwrecks in protected zones. We just ask that you apply for a permit. All permits are free. So you apply for the permit on the Underwater Culture Heritage Database. That gets sent to me and I'll bang out your permit. Give me at least 10 working days and then you'll have a permit to dive a site for a year or more. The only um, protected zone that we do ask for a small fee is the Yongala and that's because we have these moorings set up around the Yongala because it's such a significant and fragile site. So all of that money to, um, that people pay to, to um, moor on the Yongala site goes toward maintaining the moorings. Let me tell you, moorings are really, really expensive to maintain. So uh, it is the only um, mooring system in all of Queensland, and, and that just goes to show how significant uh, the Yongala really is. Oh, and feel free to answer questions. I'll, I will answer them at the end, if that's okay. So why are shipwrecks important? And why should we really care? So sh um, shipwrecks are basically like time capsules. Uh, they wrecked at a specific time um, and place and everything on board that shipwreck tells us what it was carrying either to Australia or what it was carrying away from Australia. So it's really, really um, important and, and significant information. The actual wreck itself, um, if it's a wooden shipwreck, will tell us how those uh, wrecks were made, what material, uh, what wood it was made out, if it is, was made in Australia, we'll work out, be able to tell the kind of um, wood, Australian wood that it was made, and that's really significant and, and I think super interesting information. So we also, oh, just quickly, so shipwrecks are non-renewable, so if it is blown up by dynamite, and yes, we used to do that, or well, people used to do that in the 80s and 90s, they used to blow up shipwrecks, it will never ever be replaced. So when you are diving on shipwrecks, think about that, and, and if you're disturbing artifacts, these are non-renewable, and each artifact, artifact that is associated with the shipwreck really does tell a story. So if there is a shipwreck, for instance, in a development, and the development wants to come through and take out that shipwreck, We'll never be able to get that information again unless we excavate that site and that is really really expensive to excavate all of our shipwrecks really expensive but i'll talk about that a bit later so basically shipwrecks are museums under the sea so we're really lucky that we have you know over 1400 in queensland and and you know we're all welcome to dive them i really encourage everyone to dive them and really treat them like they are museums so dive on them, take photos. I think we say um, take only photos, leave only bubbles. Uh, it's, associated with, it's sort of what we associate with all of our marine. <coughs> so um, that's super, yeah, so basically dive on them, don't touch anything, uh, keep an eye on them, take lots of photos, video, photogrammetry stuff, send that information in to us. Be very much appreciative, appreciated. Um, so also shipwrecks are our grave sites. So, Specific important shipwrecks that are grave sites are uh, Pandora, Gothenburg, Yongala, just to name a few, uh, and they really need to be treated and respected as grave sites. Get into that a bit later. So shipwrecks are also important because it's it's not just the historic information that we want to gather. It, they're also artificial reefs, and they are essential marine habitats and also biodiverse habitat um, hotspots. Some of them also function as nursery grounds. And also really interesting, the concretion that grows on shipwrecks actually helps to conserve and preserve that shipwreck. So we don't want to you know, drop an anchor on a shipwreck because it knocks off all that concretion. And that actually accelerates uh, the corrosion process, which is not great for a shipwreck site. So this picture here is a little wobby gong and that's on the Scottish prints and this other little shipwreck here, you can't see it, um, but they're, just gone blank. Um, that's on the Martha, one of the Martha Ridgeway shipwreck sites. So we can actually tell a lot about the marine environment on our shipwrecks. So um, the best thing about shipwrecks is that we know exactly where they are and we can do the same survey over and over again. So we can put out a, a baseline, uh, a tape measure, so from the bow to the stern, if, it, if the wreck has a bow to the stern, and we can run those same um, transects and gather 
um, all this information through time, which is fantastic. So we can, you know, work out what corals and sponges and or recently killed coral is, is on or that wreck or around that wreck. So which is really, really um, important information because it helps us understand the marine environment surrounding um, the wreck. What was I gonna say? Mm -hmm. Moving on. I'll think about it in the most inappropriate. Anyway, uh, so um, shipwrecks also, uh, they can tell us a lot about what is interacting with that shipwreck and, and using it as, as a habitat. So this um, photo here with all of the, the fish, that's actually on the, the Scottish Prince wreck. And it is very hard to vote. That was me trying to take a photograph of the actual shipwreck. So we have this amazing um, marine life that is associated with shipwrecks. And, and it's really, really fantastic. And, and we need to start recording all the stuff. I just remembered what I was going to say, sorry. <laughs> um, so interesting maritime archaeologists, a lot of maritime archaeologists, we, we look at shipwrecks and we really, we only see the structure of the shipwreck. We are not really recording what is growing on these shipwrecks, what's interacting with these shipwrecks. And that is something that we are now starting to, um, to rectify. We want to, um, uh, we really want to start recording everything. A lot of these shipwrecks that I'm going to be talking about tonight are in really remote locations. So if we are going out to these sites, we want to be taking all that information that we can, not just the shipwreck information that maritime archaeologists do, but we also want to look at the marine environment as well and record everything. It doesn't really take that long. So do, do, do. okay. The big thing that I love about shipwrecks is that it also can tell us about the impacts to the reef and also to the to the shipwreck itself. So we can have a look, as I've already mentioned, we go back to the same site through time, we can have a look at if there is any damage or anchor damage, um, boat damage, dynamite blowing, blowing up on the site. We can record all of that and it's a relatively easy and quick process to do. There's a lot, often sadly, there is a lot of um, fishing line and nets, uh, spear fishing uh, spears that are, I've seen that are, um, sticking out of these shipwreck sites. So those are obviously going to cause a detrimental effect to the shipwreck. They're also causing um, a bad effect for the corals and, and things that are growing um, on these wrecks. I just cannot believe how many fishing lines and fishing line and, and um, hooks are always covered on these, on these sites. And that's obviously because it's an artificial reef. I get that. Um, so, and but this is a, one of these really great things that we need to just keep monitoring. So coral bleaching and, and disease is also another thing that we can monitor, and of, of also coral scarring. This is just an example of um, the a wreck impact um, survey that I did. So um, the top left is a rope that's tied around. Um, the Scottish Prince, and they were using this as a mooring. So this was into, um, affecting the actual shipwreck integrity. And it was also obviously um, knocking off that amazing concretion, rubbing up against it. So that, that was really interfering with the shipwreck. Not great. Obviously, we've got a net here. This is our uh, shipwreck as well. And your famous um, fishing line that's often covered in shipwrecks, which I take off and then I, I basically take photos and, and record um, what's on this. So the really cool thing about shipwrecks and contrary to what everyone believes is that actually sites have an amazing preservation underwater. Um, it's some, something that you wouldn't think. Um, so compared to land-based sites, you can actually have with the right environment, you can have fantastic preservation. And so um, if, if the site is covered in sand uh, or clay or mud, then you, it creates something called an anaerobic environment. And that depletes um, oxygen out of um, the, um, the wreck underwater, submerged under this clay and, and sand. And then you get this really, really fantastic preservation. A really great example of that is the HMS Pandora. I'm, I'm not sure if everyone's heard about the Pandora. Um, it was... It's one of our most significant shipwrecks in all of Australia, and it's associated with the capture of the mutineers of the HMS Bounty. Really, really fantastic story, and, and I'm not going to go into it tonight because I swear you could 
spend like seven hours just talking about Pandora and the HMS bounty, but do have a bit of a Google uh, search if you're not if you're not familiar with Pandora. I, I kind of feel like everyone's familiar with Pandora, but I think that's just because I'm associated with other maritime archaeologists. Um, so the Pandora wrecked in 1791. It, it, it struck a reef um, really, really remote. It's called, um, it's now called Pandora's Entrance. It rapidly sunk uh, and it's, it's um, submerged in about 33 metres of water. So there were 34 crew and four prisoners that were drowned. So, so this is another grave site that we've got to be really um, you know, conscious of. And there were 89 crew and 10 prisoners that survived. And, and their, their trip back to England was absolutely amazing. But again, I won't talk about it right now. Uh, interesting enough, um, they, the vessel sunk quite rapidly. They did try and salvage as much as they could what they, they came back with. And again, it was, it was in very deep water. They came back with a, a spa, 15 feet of chain and a cat. I thought that was really cool. I just hope they didn't eat the cat. I'm sure they didn't. Sorry. Um, so this is what Pandora, um, this is what we think happened to P Pandora. It wrecked as a whole wreck. It got covered in this amazing sand. Um, and then it was, when it was located in the 1970s, uh, West Australian Maritime Museum, maritime archeologist Graham Henderson inspected the wreck in 1979. And he assessed it as um, the most spectacular shipwreck in Australian waters. Um, and it, he said that it would probably be the best preserved 17th to 80th, 18th century shipwreck in Australian waters. This is the 1980s photo mosaic, and this is what the site looked like when they went down um, to, to dive it. They were on scuba, uh, so they had very, very limited bottom time. What you're actually looking here at here is you can actually see the, um, I don't know if you can see this cursor, but you can see this is the Brody stove. You've also got anchors and cannons. It doesn't look like much, to be honest, but it's beautiful sandy bottom. And then when they started excavating, I think there was three or four excavation periods from the 80s through to the 90s. Very, very expensive um, just to excavate one excavation um, session. But when they excavated, they found these amazing artifacts um, in pristine condition. That there was all of this, you know, wine and beer and coconuts. Um, and so what was happening is that while um, while Pandora was traveling around Tahiti, they were actually souvenirring along the way and they were picking up these, you know, um, war clubs and, and, and spears and, and shells. And, and so all of that is preserved in pristine condition um, underneath the wreck. It's absolutely fantastic. They actually also found um, a, a fireplace um, that the captain had um, in, his, in his cabin. So all of this is preserved um, in the Museum of Tropical Queensland. And that was one reason that that museum was actually built and it was to house all of these amazing artifacts from Pandora. If you ever get the chance, please do um, pop in and say hello to Maddie McAllister, who is um, the maritime archeologist there. She's also the Shipwreck Mermaid. If you're not following the Shipwreck Mermaid, you should be, she's doing some amazing things. Um, and they've also just upgraded the, um, the, the museum. So do pop in and have a look at that Museum of Tropical Queensland really cool and maybe if if you um talk to maddie she might better give you a backup house don't tell her i said that anyway um oh and this is what pandora looks today so we've still got the brody stove we've still got the anchors and we also do have this this plinth um and that's um a dedication towards um the people um that were buried um as a grave site on the site so there's not much to see when you do dive pandora i'm not sure if anyone on this call has dived site but it is a fantastic site just just to know the history and while it you know it is about 33 meters there's not that much there to see um it is such a fantastic site just to, just to be there because it's I, I love it anyway as i mentioned um shipwrecks are grave sites so um an example of that is the gothenburg shipwreck it wrecked in 1875 on really remote again on old reef uh it is 112 people drowned, it wrecked during a cyclone, and, and it had a huge detrimental impact on the local communities from, it was traveling from uh, the Northern Territory, um, wrecked on Old Reef, and uh, absolutely 
um, devastating when you read the accounts of the survivors, how these people survived and what happened. All the women and children died. There were accounts that everyone was just really calm, jumped off these wrecks, knowing, the, sorry, this, um, the Gothenburg, knowing that they were going to die. They had their kids with them. They drowned. It was, it was genuinely awful. I, I remember just having tears reading the accounts of, of this, but a really significant shipwreck, not just because it is a gravesite for 112 people, but also because it is a really, really rare example. It, it has the largest boilers um, of its kind in, in these kind of conditions. It's a really fantastic site to dive. It's very shallow again. Uh, they also had, uh, they used to say that um, the Gothenburg was as safe as the bank, and so they had a, um, a big chest of money on board when it did sink and, and that really um, changed the way that, that people um, traveled with, with their, their money. So there is no money, there's no gold or anything like that on the Gothenburg and um, they recovered all of that, but it is a fantastic shipwreck. Yes. Oh, it was one of also, sorry, one of the, the, the biggest uh, maritime tra tragedies of Queensland. The other great thing about shipwrecks uh, is that they are really great for um, looking at sites and working out nat natural disturbances. So um, one of these examples of this is the foam, another amazing shipwreck in a protected zone uh, that wrecked on the Myrmidon Reef, very, very remote. Uh, and it also um, can tell us about environmental change. So um, foam wrecked in 1893, and it's the only wrecked wreck engaged in the Queensland labor train trade at the time of wrecking. So it's really, 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 uh, important to Australians of South Sea Island, Islanders because they were heading back to their islands um, with their little boxes of goodies. So we get to see uh, if we decided to excavate foam, we get to see what they were taking back to their islands. Uh, it is a very, very shallow site. Um, and so this is a, um, an example of, of, of all the cyclones that have been tracked through history. This is foam in the middle here, the little green dot. So you can see that uh, a lot of cyclones have, have gone over the top of, of foam. So um, foam sits in five meters of water. So it, it's, it's a bit of a worry. So this was the site. Uh, so what you're looking at here is this amazing flat ballast. Uh, you've got these also these amazing branching corals and, and fantastic environment uh, around the site. So again, all of this really cool coral that's growing on this winch here, protecting that site really really fantastic really healthy environment in 1982 then this is again foam in 1982 again this is um this is the same winch here uh this is it in 1982 and this is it um, when we visited the site in 2018 we're completely smashed by coral and what we're seeing here is this mound of coral rubble with this algae growing on top uh so just turn my phone over um Really, really devastating to see this, and it obviously it affects the, 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 con the conservation of the site. But uh, we also did find that the site was recovering, and so we think that um, it was probably got um, completely damaged in Cyclone Yasi or possibly Cyclone Debbie. Debbie, as we know, was a very slow moving cyclone, it moved over the site and just caused this incredible damage. But um, again, this was still in 2018, there were still signs. That the, that the site had was was recovering or or hadn't been completely damaged or disturbed. These clams are just giant clams. They're just amazing, beautiful. So let's talk about a biodiversity hotspot. Um, if you haven't dived Yongala, or, or the correct way to pronounce that is Yongala, that's the indigenous term. Please, please do. It is um, one of the best top best top ten wreck dives in the world. It wrecked in 1911. There were 121 people that drowned another um, maritime tragedy. Uh, so it, it, it left port, never seen again. We still to this day do not know um, why or how Yongala wrecked. Uh, we believe it was because of a storm, but there are theories. Was there an explosion? We're not really sure. There were no bodies that were recovered. The only, sorry, the only body that was recovered was the racehorse moonshine that washed up in Bowen. So this shipwreck, it really holds um, significance to the descendants of crew and passengers who lost their lives on board. Uh, in 2018 to 2019, there were over 4,000 people that died the site. And there were over, there was over 70 to 100 species of fish 
that have been counted on, on Yongala. This is the Yongala, so it's quite different to Pandora. It sits on the seabed. It's, um, it is listing to starboard. Uh, this is what the site looked like about 10 years ago. Um, and again, this is the cyclones that, that, that um, traveled over the site. Yongala, Yongala is just here. And we can see that it you know, does get affected by cyclones quite a lot. Um, so it sits like this. Um, so um, the starboard is deeper than the port. The port is shallower. Um, and this is basically what happened um, in Yasi in, in um, 2011. We see here, this is just um, before Yasi hit Yongala, Yongala, and this is it. This is actually the same photo, completely stripped everything, all the corals off that site. So it was, it's rapidly um, deteriorating. It's, it's, it is in a state of, it, it is estimated by um, Dr. Ian McLeod, who's an amazing um, maritime archeologist and does um, um, iron corrosion analysis. Uh, he estimates that um, um, Yongala has got probably five to 10 years before it, it does collapse. Not great. Um, so just very quickly, this is the site. This is a multi-beam survey that was done by James Cook University. Uh, this is a site in 2004. And we have, have here after Yassi, you can see that the, the bow has completely collapsed, not completely, but collapsed. We also had um, signs of tearing and also signs of warping, which is as we can see here. So very quickly, Let's dive into some local shipwrecks. Um, there is a fantastic historic shipwreck called the Scottish Prince that's on the Gold Coast. If you haven't dived it, please um, head out and, and do so. It is off Main Beach. It's on the other side of um, the shark nets. Uh, it ran aground in 1887, and it is, really is a fantastic shipwreck. We can see these two wobbies here. Uh, obviously, um, Honestly, every time I dive the Scottish Prince, there are always beautiful wobbegongs and they are often um, pregnant. So this again is, is Scottish Prince. You've again, more wobbies, lots and lots of fish. I know you've seen this photo, but I just love it. Um, and also lots of, lots of large rays and this little baby one at the back. So it's a fantastic wreck to dive. Uh, also a bit locally, uh, Cape Morton, we have a lot of, um, Shipwrecks, we've got the Aris, we've got the Marietta Dahl, we've got the St. Paul. St. Paul is very, quite deep. Um, we also have Grace Darling that we, we can't see that nobody seems to dive on. I'm not sure why, it, it's quite shallow. I think that's it there. Oh no, that's it there, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> very attractive photo of me there. Uh, so, so there are, are a lot of um, shipwrecks. This is just a, a few of them that, that I've, I've posted because I, I didn't want to go on too much about it, but there are some amazing historic shipwrecks throughout Queensland, throughout Australia and locally as well. Honestly, we're truly blessed in, in, in Brisbane and Moreton Bay area. We have some fantastic sites, we really do. This is our shipwreck that wrecked in, in 1894. And I, okay, I apologize for the photos. I'm not the most amazing photographer, but um, I think you can see that it is, is quite an amazing site. Every time I, I dive Aris, um, there's always these fantastic rays. Uh, it's a really, another really wonderful local site to dive. Um, it is in a protected zone uh, and we do have um, some amazing um, people that have access to the protected zone. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So it, it's, it's a great site to dive. More sites, um, more amazing wildlife. I think you get the point. Now, I'm not sure if people have heard about the United Nat Nations Decade of Ocean Science. If you haven't, I I'm sure everyone has. If you haven't, please jump on board. Um, it's basically a big push to, to, to get everyone that, is, um, that loves the ocean to get involved and, and start protecting um, these, these sites. So, so one of their mottos is the ocean we need, sorry, the science we need for the ocean we want. Um, and it's also it's to ensure that no one is left behind during the ocean decade implementation plan, which is this what I have up here. And I've, I've put this up here because I do think that um, maritime archaeology and, and shipwrecks, I think it does get left behind. We don't really have people that are, are, are really surveying them or, or photographing them. Uh, you know, the maritime archaeologists, the state maritime archaeologists are doing, you know, if I do say so myself, I think we're doing the best job that we can, but we cannot 
get to every single site. It is quite impossible. We are often desk bound, um, mainly doing briefings and, and things like that or permits. Um, so I, I really just want to sort of reach out to everybody and, and just really consider please diving on these shipwrecks because if anything is going to protect these sites, it's people and tourism that are visiting them and looking after these sites. Um, yay. So basically, how can you help? Dive on shipwrecks and take photos, video, photogrammetry stuff. So BZAC um, are doing some amazing stuff. They're, they're trialing um, diving on shipwrecks and that they're looking at um, doing photogram photogrammetry models, which is a really, really fantastic way to, to preserve um, and conserve these, not preserve, but to conserve these sites. So the photogrammetry, if you're not, if you're unaware, is 3D models of these sites take a zillion photos, upload it into um, software called Agisoft, or there's, there's other software as well, and you can create these amazing 3D photogrammetry stuff. But you know what, it, it's not um, not only photogrammetry, but also just photos and video, which is so, so um, important and really does help us to, to understand these shipwreck sites. So basically, if anyone is diving on sites, I, I wanna ask you to please, if you can send me that data, um, I, I'm trying to, it's my new passion project. I'm, I really want to start um, looking at these, you know, as many shipwrecks as I can, putting all that information, photos, information um, about marine flora and fauna into a database and mapping the, these sites. Um, and also I want to sort of clean up these wrecks and, and, and get all this rubbish out of our oceans. It's a big, big thing for me. It's, um, yeah, that's why I love Reef Check. Dive on more shipwrecks. So who is diving and, and how can you get involved? Well, we have, if you're interested in, in diving the Yongala, um, we have um, Matt King, it's Yongala Dive. We also have Mike Ball Dive Expeditions. And, you know, it's really great to, to support these people. We're in COVID at the moment. We really want to support um, dive tourism. So Mike Ball, he, he dives sometimes the um, Yongala, Gothenburg, and also Pandora, among other amazing reefs. We also have um, Brisbane Scuba. So Steve is fantastic. He's local. He dives the Aris. He's got a permit. So basically, you don't even have to worry about a permit. Just rock up to Brisbane Scuba. Um, they also dive on some of these other amazing shipwrecks as well that we have out here. Um, and that was just Brisbane Sub um, Aqua Club BZAC that I was talking about, the photogrammetry stuff. We also have Andy Viduka. He's um, doing his PhD on the GERT course, which is a scientific GERT course. Um, if anyone's interested in sort of doing um, further photogrammetry, um, he runs the GERT courses. Also join our AMA. So AMA is the Australasian Institute for Maritime Archaeology. Uh, I am uh, the Queensland State Tutor for AMA. Um, we also do conferences. Our next conference on shipwrecks and maritime archaeology will be in Townsville in November. Often always super, super fun. We have a session called Pints and Professionals, where you rock up to the pub and basically have a drink and just, just chat to, to maritime archaeologists and talk shipwrecks and all things underwater cultural heritage. Townsville this year, November. It's going to be fantastic. We're mm, actually, I can't remember where we are, but anyway. Uh, uh. So um, just a little bit quickly, I, I am, as I just said, um, I'm an AMNS part one course. If anyone is interested in um, participating, it's a maritime archaeology two day course. It's quite fantastic. You learn all about maritime archaeology. You learn how to map a site underwater. We touch on um, with um, tapes. Uh, we also touch on photogrammetry. It is a full on two day course. Uh, and that is it's actually taught throughout Australia. So if anyone is, is, is locking in it, it's, it's, a, it's a nationally recognized course as well. So get involved. So this is what I was talking about before, um, the um, Australasian Underwater Cultural Heritage Database, a really big mouthful. Anyone, if anyone is interested in any shipwrecks in Australasia, you can access these sites through this website. It is a bit clunky and it can be a little bit frustrating at times. Hope Andy's not listening. Um, but if you have problems, then let me know and I can guide you through it. You basically access this page, um, and then you can um, look at these maps and areas, or if you're after a particular shipwreck like Yongala or Pandora, then you can just type that in. A lot of um, historical information and um, possibly photos will come out about these, these wrecks. Um, oops. Oh, also, look, you know, every state has a state maritime archeologist. So contact them, uh, get involved. Um, you know, if, if you're, you're interested in um, your local state um, shipwrecks, these are the people to talk to.
Queensland for me, that's me. Yay, contact me. But um, for a limited time, because I, I am, I won't be at the Department of Environment and Science. Um, well, I'll be there until the 28th of May. And I'm just focusing um, completely on my, my, my PhD. Yay. Uh, we've got New South Wales, Brad and Sterling, South Australia's Rick Bullers, Victoria, Danielle. Danielle is, is fantastic. She's just new to the role and she uh, has a lot of experience overseas. Um, fantastic. They also have a vessel, which is really, really great. MAAV, I forgot to put um, Maritime Archaeology Association of Victoria is also fantastic. If you live in Victoria, they're really, really hands on. They often go out searching and looking and diving on shipwreck sites. Please do get involved in MAAV. Tasmania, Mike Nash, I think you can read the rest. Um, so the Commonwealth, if you've got any Commonwealth shipwrecks that you're interested in, then please talk to Andy Baduka. And if you are interested in any shipwrecks um, in New Zealand, then please contact Matt Carter or Kurt, uh, Kurt Bennett. Uh, Matt Carter is Major Projects Foundation. Now, I haven't mentioned it, but there are some shipwrecks that do cause um, pollution and oil in our marine environment. And Matt Carter, um, Dr. Matt Carter is definitely the person to talk to about that. And they have this amazing foundation called um, Major Projects Foundation. And their main goal and aim is to, to go out and, and look at these sites. So specifically looking at World War II sites that, are, that have this oil and fuel leakage problem. So get involved with that. Oh, and just would like to um, acknowledge Reef Check. Thank you so much for inviting me to talk tonight. And all these people um, helped and, and um, produced these amazing photos that I've been um, showing you, sharing you tonight. So my contact details, if anyone um, would, would like to, to talk um, more about shipwrecks, please do contact me. I've, I've put my, my personal and my Flinders account because I won't be having my, um, my work account any longer. Wow, I'm sorry, I really flew through that. Um, any questions? Ah, or do I stop sharing? Yeah, if you want to stop uh, sharing. Is still there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. You're so lovely. I'm yeah, sorry, so I can stop I sharing. Stop sharing, right. Wee, yay. Yeah, yay, okay. Thanks. All right, so we do have some questions for you. So Terry wanted to know if Amos still runs courses, but you answered that question and said they do. So yes, um, feel free to contact me um, if you want because I can, I've got I know the um, the contact details for people. I, I will just let people know with Amos that we are in the very the process of updating the whole Amos course, which is awesome and fantastic. But I am we are still running them. Um, I just won't have all the all the updated stuff at at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, Alessandro wants to know, does the scientific literature have papers about shipwrecks, biodiversity, hotspots, et cetera, in Australia? No, uh, no. And, and this is one of the problems and, and thank you. It's a really great question. Uh, so this is what I am, I'm, I'm really trying to push other maritime archeologists to do. It's not just me that's pushing this. It, it, we're just realizing, hey, let's get, you know, we can do more. Um, so we do have a fantastic PhD student from James Cook University that's looking at, um, coral biodiversity on the Yongala, um, but we don't really have a lot of papers or historic stuff about um, marine biodiversity. But if you would like to do a PhD or further study on that, really good topic, please do. Very good. There's, there's a mission for you, Alessandra. Okay, Janet asked, was it underwater mermaids that you mentioned earlier, Tony? Oh, so Shipwreck Mermaid. So Shipwreck Mermaid is Maddie McAllister, um, so, so it's a, she's, I've got a Facebook um, page. Please do, do um, look, she just does some fantastic stuff and it's all about um, the museum and shipwrecks. And um, so just follow her on, on Facey and Instagram. Um, and she's, she's really great. She's, she's very, has some really great blogs and, and videos. So she's a buddy. Excellent. <laughs> um, Peter White wants to know if, um, where do you send data on rubbish removed from wrecks? So do you have a central database, I suppose, for that? Um, I, this is something, so this is my passion project. Um, while I've been collecting the data, um, this is something that I'm, I'm reaching out to people. I really want people to send that data to me and I'm, I'm in the process of creating this database to send it to me. Um, I've been thinking about um, touching base with Tangora Blue, who also have um, amazing um, 
rubbish collection. But I'm um, actually, you'd probably, Peter, you'd be a really good person to talk to about that. So um, I might touch base with you a bit later, if that's okay. All right. Um, Terry said, thank you for the talk. Um, Thanks, it's renewed his interest in maritime archaeology. Okay, and Colleen says, what's the most interesting item you found on a wreck? I was just wondering if someone was going to ask me this. Oh, look, honestly, and I'm such a nerd because, you know, I, I haven't found any gold or treasure or anything like that. And, and, you know, I guess as a maritime archaeologist, I don't look at shipwrecks like that. But I did find, actually, someone handed in, it was a little doll's leg, a ceramic doll's leg. And it was off the um, Lockhart site, which is an amazing shipwreck that wrecked in Victoria. Nearly everybody died. Only two people survived. And I often think, you know, does this doll's leg, does it belong to a little girl? Is it someone that, you know, is it a present that someone was, was, was bringing back for someone? I guess that's, I didn't really mention it, but one thing I love about shipwrecks is that, you know, often we have these historic, you know, um, you know, we're, we're men of, of, you know, privilege, we're writing all about these historic notes, but often what was left out of those conversations were, you know, um, these amazing conversations about children and about, you know, the elderly and about Indigenous people. And so that's what shipwrecks are so awesome because they, they give those kind of people voices. That was, sorry, that was a long-winded. <laughs> so it was a doll's leg. Okay. <laughs> okay, I so love that. Terry also was... asked... Um, <laughs> Is there any particular information you're looking for in photographs from wreck sites and uh, old photos of any interest? Thank you so much for saying that. Yes, yes, yes. Please. Um, so if, if anyone has old photos, I really would love some old photos as, as far back. Any wreck. So I'm probably, I may be creating a big thing here. But <laughs> send me in all the wrecks because I, I've got people interested in helping me, you know, um, go through them and put them in the database. Um, so any old photographs of or video of wrecks, please send it in to me. Also any um, um, new information on wrecks. And so what I'm looking at is um, um, the marine um, growth and marine animals that are associated with shipwrecks, but also the shipwreck themselves and any artifacts. So send me any all you got, but you know, just all the good photos, please. <laughs> right. Please, please do send to me. Or touch base with me and, and I'll, I'll set up a database. Okay, so Alessandra said that um, they've got the same problem in Italy, I guess, which is lack of information. Uh, no, oh, I, no I, the I, lack I, of I, published papers, yeah. Oh, okay, well, okay, yeah, yeah. So please, who wants to do a PhD on this? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I think it's Alessandra who's going to do it. Um, Colleen said we're all nerds here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we? I love it. Um, Julie, there was a um, question a little bit farther up, I think got missed. I think maybe it was answered during the talk, but um, maybe to just reiterate, um, we have one, I think it's from M, Emma maybe. Um, question for Tony, I'd be happy to dive the sites and provide photos, I'll be an amateur, but find it hard to uh, get to them lacking a boat. Is there some way to find out where we are needed and to get those get to those places? Yeah, and, and so that, that's something that we obviously have a problem with. You know, as we all know, diving is quite an expensive hobby. Um, we don't have a lot of funding, but I, I guess what I'm really hoping to do is, is you know, once I have this database set up and we're getting really amazing scientific information is then to apply for funding. I'm hoping to, to do some of this through through reef check, heads up, Jody, um, and, and, you know, and like, um, you know, do joint funding and, but, um, BZAC and, and all of the, the tourism um, people that I've already mentioned, if you can, you know, jump on with them, um, you know, they're, you're not only supporting the industry, you're also, um, you know, helping out and by, by looking after these shipwrecks. So, um, but stay tuned. Hopefully we, we will do some amazing surveys and we'll call out for people. Okay. In a year or so. <laughs> yeah. So Scott, um, Scott has a fiance who is a land archaeologist and so she's explained how to excavate on land and in pits and stuff, but how do you excavate underwater with sediment flying everywhere? You know what, honestly, it is so much easier, oh, I shouldn't have said this, so much easier to excavate underwater, depending on the conditions, um, but say like Pandora, you just sort of casually float above the, you know, the site and you just hand fan, we call it hand fanning, or if you have a dredge, you basically just just dredge the site. It's it's actually so much easier, and it's 
cleaner and um, I mean obviously you do have you know you are using tanks um, or you know it, it, but it can be easier on these sites and, and if you with the sediment you know you do need to stabilize um, your trenches that you're doing but in saying that we don't do a lot of excavation in maritime archaeology and sorry I should have mentioned this a lot of the big push is really in situ preservation where we keep everything as it is and that's because through you know through time the technology just changes so rapidly um, and so we want to be able to come back and, and with the new technology and 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 monitor these sites oh, sorry I'm going to keep my answers short and simple that's all right I think that's um okay so I've got someone um Glenn said thanks because he enjoyed the, the talk um have to get back out there um someone called get wrecked um said who would know about ships anchor winch circa late 1700s and also bilge pumps deck mounted well lots of people if you wanted to um send me um some information on what you're after i can um either help you out myself or i can have a look um or or introduce you to the correct people and steve rosberg's offered everyone a trip to the grace darling and aris so there you go Steve, that would be fantastic. Grace Darling would be amazing. I haven't dived the site. Please, let's let's talk. I, I've been meaning to, to catch up with you and, and chat stuff anyway. And St. Paul. And Mel. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in touch. I, yeah, I was, anyway. Thanks, okay. Steve. Okay. Um, so that's it for, for questions. Um, unless I've <sighs> got any last minute ones. But um, Tony should host trips with Brisbane Scuba. There you go. Already on it. It's Already a great on? idea. Well, <laughs> Steve doesn't know yet, but yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, he does. He does. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. I really, really appreciate you hanging around. And, and please, like, feel free to, to send me um, any information, photos. You know, I, I love talking about shipwrecks. I, I can bang on all night about this. So, I mean, you know, let's think about getting some really amazing, you know, shipwreck diving um, started. Let's get a conversation started. Okay, and just for those who joined us a bit late, so I noticed we had a few people come in late. Um, this has been recorded and it will be up on our YouTube channel in a couple of days. So um, if in that case, if you didn't write down Tony's emails, you can also grab them from the end of the video um, off the YouTube, off the Reef Check Australia YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, and uh, extra, a lot of comments coming in for Tony, but <laughs> round of applause for her awesome presentation. Thank you. And um, we'll see you guys next month. Thank you, everyone.